Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today we will talk about normal and oblique incidence. Yeah, in the last class we talk about double refraction. Yeah, and uh, we also talked about the different kinds of double refracting media or birefringent media, which we categorized as uh, positive and uh, negative birefringent media, and then we also subcategorized them as uniaxial crystals and the biaxial crystal. Today we will learn refraction in these double refracting uh, media. And in this uh, class, first of all we will talk about uh, normal incidence and then uh, it would be followed by oblique incidence. Now the refraction of a plane wave for normal incidence is discussed first. In this case we will consider a plane wave and we will assume that uh, this wave is made to incident normally on a uniaxial negative crystal like calcite. Now we choose the optic axis to lie on a plane of the paper that is suppose if this is the crystal and this is the incident uh, plane wave then the optic axis is assumed to be in the plane of this paper in some direction say making an angle alpha with the horizontal. Now to determine the ordinary ray refraction or to determine the direction of refracted ray for ordinary ray, what we will do is that as soon here in this figure we will assume that a ray is made to incident here on this uh, negative uniaxial crystal and we assume that there are uh, two rays A, B and C, D which are made to incident on, the, on this crystal normally. Yeah and the optic axis is denoted by this dashed line which is in the plane of this paper. Okay. And the point of incidence is B and D. Now to determine the ordinary ray path with point B as the center, what we will do is that we will draw a sphere of radius C by N naught where N naught is the refractive index of the medium for ordinary ray. Similarly, we draw another sphere of same radius from point D because we have assumed that two rays A, B and C, D are falling on the crystal normally. Therefore, treating point B and D as a center, we draw a sphere which is this sphere and the radius of this sphere is C by N naught. Now, after this, we will draw a common tangent to this sphere. Now, to the common tangent plane to these sphere is shown as O O prime in fig figure 7. Let us go again to figure 7 and this line is the common tangent to this sphere. Now, and this common tangent represents the wave front corresponding to the ordinary refracted ray. Yeah. A plane wave is falling on the double refracting crystal normally and then from there we suppose that we are given two rays and these two rays uh, falls at point B and D on the interface of birefringent material and treating point B and D as a center we draw two spheres and then we draw a common tangent to these spheres and this common tangent represent the wave front which corresponds to the ordinary refracted ray. Now the dots show the direction of vibration which are perpendicular to K and to the optic axis. Yeah? Now you see that in this figure 7 these are the dots and these dots are the polarization direction are the direction of vibration. Now, as you see that these are dots, therefore they are going inside the paper. Okay, they are perpendicular to the plane of the paper, and the oscillations is like this, up and down. Okay, and these oscillations are perpendicular to the optic axis as well as the wave vector k, which is in this direction. Okay, therefore make it a point for O ray the vibration direction is perpendicular to vector k 
as well as it is perpendicular to optic axis. Okay. Now, uh, for isotropic medium, the direction of vibration is associated with E field, electric field. But for anisotropic medium, it is D which is perpendicular to K, D is displacement vector and D is related to E through relation which is expressed as or termed as D is equal to epsilon E, where epsilon is permittivity and E is electric field, D is displacement vector and D is related to E through this relation. Yeah. Now, we associate vibration now with the direction of T, therefore these dots represents the direction of D vibration, yeah. D is uh, vibrating in a direction which is given by this dot in this particular case, yeah and this is also the direction of polarization and this definition is uh, more correct for an isotropic material or I should say that this is more generalized definition because for isotropic material or usable material which does not exhibit any birefringence, the D and E they are in the same direction. But for anisotropic material, the D is not in the direction of E okay? and therefore, D is preferred as direction of vibration. Why? Because D is perpendicular to K, the dot product of D and K is equal to 0 therefore, D is perpendicular to K and this is why we associate polarization with D vector. Yeah? Now, to determine the extraordinary ray, till now we have just talked about ordinary ray. Now, to determine extraordinary ray, we draw an ellipse centered at point B. Why do we draw an ellipse? Because we know in case of extraordinary ray, the velocity is direction dependent and therefore, at point B for extraordinary ray, we draw an ellipse. Since it is a negative uniaxial crystal, we know that the velocity of extraordinary ray is larger than that of ordinary ray. Therefore, the a sphere would be inside this ellipse. Yeah? And since it is a negative uniaxial crystal, the semi minor axis of the ellipse would be along optic axis and along optic axis the sphere and ellipse will touch okay and this is why the semi minor axis the ellipse is drawn in such a way that semi minor axis is in this direction along the optic axis okay once semi minor axis is decided we can easily draw the ellipse okay now we know that for extraordinary ray, we will have to draw the ellipsoid of revolution. To draw the ellipsoid of revolution, this ellipse is rotated around optic axis and this will give the ellipsoid of revolution. Okay. The similar procedure would be repeated for E ray at starting from point D. Okay. Here too, we will draw an ellipse and then uh, we will orient the ellipse in such a way that the minor axis of the ellipse is along optic axis which is in this direction and once it is drawn then here again we will draw a common tangent and in this particular case this line would serve as a common tangent to the to the two ellipse and this line is e e prime line yeah e e prime line now represents the wave front of the e ray extraordinary ray now, you see that the wave front of ordinary ray and extraordinary ray, they both are parallel yeah? and the wave vector for the both rays are perpendicular to this wave front. Now, the since along the optic axis, both rays travel with the same velocity, the for minor axis of the ellipse would be equal to C by N naught. Okay, which is the radius of the sphere. Now, major axis of the ellipse would be deci decided by this relation C by N E, this would be the length of major axis. 
the ellipsoid of revolution as I stated before is obtained by rotating the ellipse about the optic axis and similarly we draw another uh, ellipsoid of revolution uh, starting from point D okay? and common tangent would be E E prime. Okay? Now, if we join point B to the point of contact O, I mean this point, if we let me pick a different color, if we join B with O, then this line represents the direction of propagation of O ray, ordinary ray. Similarly, if we join point B to the point of contact E, then corresponding to the incident ray A B, the direction of extraordinary ray will be along B E, which means this would be the direction of extraordinary ray and this would be the direction of ordinary ray. Yeah? What we did is that we drew common, common tangent and the common tangent touches the sphere at point O, then we joined B with O and then B O would be the direction of propagation of O ray. Similarly, B E would be the direction of propagation of E ray. The direction of V vector k is same for both O and E waves that is both are along B O along the direction of propagation of ordinary ray. If we have different direction of optic axis, then although the direction of ordinary ray will remain the same, the extraordinary ray will propagate in a different direction which is shown in this figure. Here you see that the optic axis is now directed here along this direction. Now, if we change the direction of optic axis, the direction of O ray remain as it is. Okay? O ray did not change its direction of propagation, while the E ray direction got changed. Yeah? You see, in the first case, the E ray was on the right hand side of O. Now, here in the second case, the E ray is on the left hand side of O ray okay? and this would be your O ray. Okay, it means that direction of E ray depends upon the orientation of optic axis. Okay. Now, thus if a ray is incident normally on a canal side crystal and if the crystal is rotated about the normal, then the optic axis and the extraordinary ray will also rotate about the normal okay. and this rotation would be on the periphery of a cone. Okay. And now you see here at the output we have two rays, okay. this is ray number 1 which is for ordinary ray and this is ray number 2 for the extraordinary ray, similarly here too. Now you s in ordinary ray we see a only particular type of polarization which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper, while in E ray the polarization is in the plane of this paper. Okay, this horizontal lines represents the direction of vibration for E ray. Okay. Therefore, what you can see is that in case of O ray, the vibration, the direction of D is perpendicular to optic axis as well as wave vector k. Okay. For O ray, the D is perpendicular to wave vector k and D is also perpendicular to optic axis while for E ray, what we see is that the D is also perpendicular to K, but D is in the plane containing K and optic axis. Okay? D is in the plane which have wave vector K and optic axis both. Okay? This is for E ray. Okay? This is the difference between the O and E ray okay? and these are very important points. Now, the ray refractive index corresponding to the extraordinary ray is given by equation number 11, which we have already seen. Now, once we know the dependence of refractive index 
on theta which is angle made by the ray with optic axis. Once this relation is known using Fermat principle also you can decide the direction of propagation of E ray. Okay? Now, the direction of vibration for O ray is normal to the optic axis and the wave vector k this we have already uh, discussed and the direction of vibration for E ray is perpendicular to k and lies in the plane containing the E ray and the optic axis. Okay? They are along small straight lines drawn on the extraordinary ray in figure 7 okay, as, it, as is visible here. Okay? These are the direction of vibration in case of E ray. Now, and this is how we decide the direction uh, of O and E ray after refraction on normal incidence in a birefringent medium. Now, we see that we can conclude that an incident ray therefore, will split up into two rays propagating in different direction and when they leave the crystal we will obtain two linearly polarized beams. Why two linearly polarized beam? Because we launched an unpolarized light and O ray contains polarization which is vibrating perpendicular to the plane of the paper while E ray contains a polarization which is vibrating in the plane of the paper. Okay? I would like to make two points very clear here that and we have already discussed this also that unpolarized light is represented by this symbol and this double headed arrow represents the random direction of polarization, the random orientation of the vibration plane of the electric field, the vibration direction of the electric field. Yeah. Now, whenever we say that light is vertically po polarized or light is linearly polarized oscillating in the vertical direction, then we represent it with this arrow, vertical arrow. Now, whenever we say linear polarization, then we assume that the polarization which is perpendicular to this linear direction is removed. It may so happen that there are some polarization, feeble uh, magnitude of uh, electric field are present in these directions which are not along this dominant direction. Okay? But still since the dominant field is oscillating in a vertical direction, we call it a linearly polarized light. Similarly, the field which is vibrating perpendicular to the plane of the paper, it is not so that only one field is there, only one vector is there which is oscillating in that direction. There would be a component which is slightly deviated, but still that it would be assumed that the dominant direction of polarization is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Now, in the case, uh, above case which we have discussed till now, we have assumed that the optic axis makes an arbitrary angle with the normal to the surface. Okay? Say this angle is alpha. Okay? Now, this was the medium and this was the normal and the optic axis was pointing in this directions and say this angle is alpha. Okay? Now, there are two special cases. The first case is when alpha is equal to 0 and the second case is when alpha is equal to pi by 2. Okay? Now, in these two special cases, when optic axis is along the no normal to the interface and when the optic axis is perpendicular to the uh, normal to the interface. In these two cases, O ray as well as E ray, they both travel along the same direction and this is also shown in figure number 9 and 10 which we will discuss in detail. Now, if the incident wave is polarized perpendicular to the optic axis, it will propagate as an O wave with velocity C by n naught and this is also depicted in the figure number 9 and 10 and this is also clear from our previous analysis. Yeah. Here too we have uh, listed the properties of E ray as well as O ray where it says that the direction of vibration would be perpendicular to K as well as O f or O ray while direction of vibration would be perpendicular to K and it will lie in the plane. Uh, which is uh, made by wave vector k and optic axis. 
these are the properties for E ray. Now, with this suppose we have a situation in which optic axis is along this line. Okay, this, this horizontal line lines represent the optic axis direction, the orientation of optic axis. Okay. Now, in this case what we see is that since the optic axis is in horizontal direction, if we launch an unpolarized light, then what will happen is that along this horizontal direction, the velocity of O and E ray would be the same. The, therefore, if the birefringent medium is uniaxial negative crystal, then the at from the point of incidence, we will draw an sphere as well as ellipsoid of revolution and the ellipsoid would be oriented in such a way that its minor axis would be in the horizontal direction. Why? Because along this optic axis, the two velocities, the velocities, velocities of O and E waves would be the same. Therefore, the sphere would touch the ellipse at these two points, the horizontal point. Okay. The ellipse is related to O ray and in O ray we know the vibration D is perpendicular to K as well as optic axis and since optic axis is, is in the horizontal direction and K vector is in forward direction. Therefore, the only possibility for direction of vibration is perpendicular to the plane of the paper which is given here. Similarly, for E ray the direction would be in such a way that it is perpendicular to K and it lie in the plane which is created by optic axis and the wave vector K and this horizontal position of this vibration satisfies these two criteria. Okay. Therefore, this line uh, this ray is O ray and the second ray is E ray. Okay. Now, here in this figure in figure number 9 you see that that in this direction both O and E ray they both travel in this direction in the downward direction. Okay, the direction of propagation is downward. How to calculate? Suppose this is our point A and this is our point B, we draw two spheres considering A and B as a center and then draw common tangent and then join A with the this tangent point and so say this point is O and this point is O prime then join A with O and this would be the direction of O ray. Similarly, draw two is ellipsoid of revolution, draw common tangent and say this is C and C prime, then you join A with C, then A C direction will now represent the direction of E ray. It means both O ray and E ray they are traveling in the same direction, but O ray is traveling with a speed which is equal to C by N O while E ray is traveling with a speed which is equal to C by N E and we know that in negative uniaxial crystal the velocity of E ray is larger. Okay. This is V E and this is V O. So, since V E is larger than V O therefore, sphere would be within the ellipse. Okay. Now, it is also clear from the figure is that the two velocities are different and therefore, there is a difference between point O and C, O is earlier than C. Okay. And using this property, using the difference in velocities, we can fabricate quarter and half wave plates which we will discuss in coming lecture. Okay. Now, consider a different case, where in the optic axis of the birefringent medium is pointing normal to the plane of the paper. Now, these dots they represents the direction of optic axis which is normal to the plane of the paper which are which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Now, in this case what happens is that we will launch the waves and then for O ray we will draw a sphere while for E ray we will draw an ellipsoid of revolution. Now, 
since optic axis is inside pointing inside the plane of the paper in that inside direction only the two rays will exhibit the same velocities. Okay. Therefore, if you want to draw this in 3 D then it would look like this the figure will look like uh, look something like this. Okay. Now, you see that these points are the points where the sphere and the ellipse will touch. Well, if you take the cross section of this, then what you will get is out inner circle and outer circle. Inner circle is for O ray, while outer circle is for E ray. Okay. I repeat, the inner circle is for O ray. Okay, we have a sphere, we have a ellipsoid of revolution and the minor axis of the ellipsoid is along the optic axis. Okay. And now, you will uh, to create the ellipsoid of revolution, you will have to rotate the ellipse. We have an ellipse which is like this okay. and this is the direction of minor axis. Now, to create ellipsoid of revolution, we will have to rotate the ellipse around optic axis and since minor axis is pointing along optic axis the rotation would be like this or like this. After this rotation we will create if you see it on the top it would look like a circle and if you see it from the side then it, it will look like this. Okay. Now, if you take the cross section of uh, this ellipsoid of revolution you will get a bigger circle here which represents E ray. Now, here too what you see is that that both the rays are propagating in the same direction both O ray as well as E ray yeah you see here. Now, which one will be the O ray and which one will be the E ray for O ray the polarization the d should be perpendicular to k and k is in this direction and this is satisfied by both o and e ray. For o ray the d must also be perpendicular to the optic axis and this condition is being satisfied by this ray okay? because this vibration is it is perpendicular to both direction of k as well as the optic axis. Therefore, this ray is O ray now, yeah. while this ray you see that the oscillation direction is along optic axis yeah. and we know that for E ray D must be in plane which is spanned by optic axis and K and D must be perpendicular to K and for this ray we see that the vibration is perpendicular to the plane and which of course, would be perpendicular to the k vector and this vibration is also contained in a plane which is spanned by k and optic axis which contains both optic axis and vector k in this particular case is a plane which is like this which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. If this is the plane of the paper then the plane which contains both optic axis and k would be like this. Okay, This would be the plane which contains both OA and optic axis of O a and wave vector k and you know that the direction of vibration is in this plane only. Therefore, the second ray would be E ray, this ray is now E ray. Okay, we will always exercise these two conditions to check whether the ray is O or E. Okay. Now, let us consider the third case where the optic axis is along this direction. Okay it is going through the material medium. Now, if the optic axis is pointing in this direction and since wave is incident normally wave vector k would be in this direction as is written here. Now, since the optic axis direction is this the velocities of O and A ray, uh, ray would be same at this point okay, and this would be the, the semi minor axis of the ellipse. Okay. We will again draw sphere an ellipse, okay, this is the ellipse 
and we will then draw common tangent to this and now we see that the tangent which is common to both spheres is also common to both ellipsoid of revolution. Therefore, in this particular case, in this particular orientation of optic axis, both O and E ray will travel with the same velocity. O and E rays travel with same velocity and of course, in same direction. Okay. Therefore, in this particular case what we understood is that both O and E ray travel with the same velocity and with the same direction. Now, what you see that since the optic axis is pointing here in this particular direction and if we take a polarization which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper, then this polarization would be perpendicular to the optic axis and this polarization is also perpendicular to the k. Yeah. And you talk about this horizontal polarization, then horizontal polarization is also perpendicular to the optic axis as well as to the direction of k. It means irrespective whether we are talking about dot polarization or horizontal li line polarization, irrespective whether we talk about this polarization or this polarization they both satisfies the criteria of being O ray as well as E ray. Okay. Therefore, in this particular case, we will have both type of polarization in O ray as well as E ray. Yeah. This is all for normal incidence. Now, we will look into oblique incidence, a bit more complicated case. In this case, we will consider oblique incidence of a plane wave in on, on a negative uniaxial crystal. And again similar to the previous case, we will use Huygens principle to determine the shape of the refracted wave front. Okay. Now, let us go to the picture. Now, in this picture you see, let us suppose that B D is the wave front which is met to incident obliquely on this interface. Okay. B D is met to incident at some angle, okay, which is non-zero angle. Okay. And due to this oblique incidence, the point B of the wave front falls earlier as compared to point D. Okay. Say point D takes some time, say this is equivalent to time t in reaching point F or in reaching the interface. Okay. A wave front, a plane wave front is made to incident obliquely at the interface of a double refracting medium. And since wave front is inclined, the lower part of the wave front touches the interface first and the upper portion of the wave front touches the interface later, a bit later. And say the upper portion of the wave front touches the extreme upper portion of the wave front touches the interface t time later. Okay. Now, if the time taken for the disturbance or for the wave front to reach point F from D is T, then B as a center we draw a sphere of radius C by n naught into T. Okay. What we will do is that, that we treat B as a center and then draw a sphere of radius C by n naught into T, because by the time the D reaches F the wave which has already incident at point B, it would have travelled within the birefringent material medium. For O ray, we will draw a sphere, the sphere is drawn here. Okay. And say the direction of optic axis is along this dashed line. Okay. Therefore, for E ray, for extraordinary ray, we will again draw a ellipsoid of revolution and the ellipsoid would be in such that, that the minor axis of the ellipsoid is along optic axis. Okay. Now, the ellipsoid of revolution of semi minor and semi major axis as C by n naught into t and C by n e into t would be drawn. 
okay this is easy to draw once you know the length of semi minor axis and major axis okay and we also know that the minor axis is along optic axis with this then what we will do is that we will follow the same procedure which we followed in the last topic from point f we will draw tangent to the sphere as well as to the ellipsoid of revolution okay for tangent let us pick different color this is tangent to the sphere and the second line this line is tangent to the ellipsoid okay now join point b to o okay this line will represent the direction of propagation of o ray and this dot represents the vibration direction similarly this line represents the direction of propagation of e ray and this horizontal line represents the direction of vibration now these planes the the tangent plane which is fo and fe these planes represents the refracted wave front corresponding to ordinary and extraordinary rays respectively now if the points of contact are o and e then the ordinary and extraordinary refracted ray will propagate along bo and be respectively which are shown here in this figure yeah this is the direction of o ray propagation and this is direction of e ray propagation now figure 13 correspond to the case when the optic axis is normal to the plane of the incidence this figure now in this particular case the optic axis was in the plane of the paper this optic axis was oriented at angle alpha with respect to the normal to the interface but now in the second figure in figure number 13 we are considering a case where optic axis is again normal to the plane of the paper okay and we have already discussed this case in our previous slides and here we know that both for both e and o ray we will get circles and for e ray the circle radius would be bigger we will again draw tangent from point f to these two different circles the contact point for the inner circle is o while the contact point for the outer circle is e if we join b with o and this represents the direction of propagation of e ray when we join b with e then it represents the direction of propagation of e ray now you see here the tangent from point f to the inner circle is uh, at a point o yeah this is the tangent and therefore this ray represents the direction of propagation of o ray while the tangent to the outer circle from point f is uh, fe and the contact point is e therefore this direction represents the direction of e ray now you see here is that in o ray the vibration direction is represented by this horizontal line instead of the dots which represents the vibration into the plane of the paper okay now the polarization vibration direction is swapped okay which we have already discussed in the previous slides now for the case of figure 13 where optic axis is inside the plane of the paper or where optic axis is normal to the plane of the paper the extraordinary ray will also satisfy snell's law and therefore we will have this relation where sin i by sin r is equal to ne for e ray when optic axis is normal to the plane of the incidence yeah make it a point this is only true when the optic axis is normal to the plane of the paper or normal to the plane of the incidence while the for ordinary ray snell's law is always valid and we can easily write sin i by sin r is equal to n not observe the difference here on the right hand side we have n e while here in the case of o ray we have n o yeah this is for o ray and this is for e ray okay now this is all for um, uh, refraction through uh, birefringent medium i uh, conclude my lectures with this thank you for being with me see you in the next class